thank you all for joining. Uh, we are now going to be discussing our webinar on Monitor Plus, our wireless environmental and temperature monitoring solution. I'll be presenting also along with John Morgan, Director of Marketing at Elemental Machines. Hello, everybody. So what does Monitor Plus do? So Monitor Plus is a remote temperature monitoring solution, which is wireless. It monitors refrigerators, freezers, incubators, ovens, humidity chambers, greenhouses, and also biofuel, and also other equipment as well. It utilizes a thermocoupler, which is attached to a sensor that sits directly inside your freezers, fridges, and incubators magnetically, or it can be used with Velcro. It monitors your devices every 15 seconds and sends that signal via Bluetooth to the gateway, which helps you to have multiple facilities. We utilize that Wi-Fi signal, and if needed, there's a cellular signal just in case for backup. Yeah, Carrington, a little bit more about how it works. You can see in the diagram on the left, you know, we the elements are very small. They sort of fit in the palm of your hand, um, and they either attach to the equipment you want to monitor or, you know, they sit in the environment you want to monitor. As you said, they take a reading every 15 seconds, upload it to the Elemental Machines Cloud, and then it's displayed on the dashboard um, that people can access sort of anywhere they have an internet connection. The other thing it does is you can go in and set alerts. So for instance, if you have a minus 80 freezer and something happens to it, someone leaves the door open or you have a power failure, um, you can set it up to send you an alarm uh, via text message when the temperature exceeds a certain threshold limit. And we know that real-time alerting is something that's extremely beneficial. Absolutely. So there's two different type of monitors that we're providing. And Monitor T is mainly temperature. It Specifications are, are kind of unique because it goes from negative 200 Celsius all the way to positive 200 Celsius degrees. It monitors those devices every 15 seconds. And it does that wirelessly as well. This is the one that utilizes the thermocoupler. Yeah, and I think the, they're very easy to deploy. It takes about a minute to install the Element T and to put the thermocouple into your freezer or fridge or oven or whatever it is you're monitoring. And I know the Ambient A is more of the environmental, uh, where it, temp uh, it might measures the light, temperature, humidity, and pressure. But this one is kind of already installed. It's ready to go. As soon as you get it, uh, you just plug in the battery, and then it starts to monitor monitor and uh, send that information directly to the dashboard. Uh, some of the unique qualities about this one, uh, the battery life on it is expected to be about five years, so there's no replacement and the installation is easy. NIST certifications, which seem to be a big issue and a lot of people are concerned with, uh, they don't come NIST certified, but they can be. Uh, they are checked to NIST standards. Uh, I know each one of the elemental machines are tested and checked for NIST standards, but if that NIST certification is required, uh, I think elemental machines works along with a uh, third party external laboratory that can contract, be contracted out to calibrate these, uh, devices. Yeah, that's correct. For an additional charge, we will, um, have NIST certified sensors. The certification is done by a partner of ours um, uh, to make sure that they are traceable to the NIST standards. All right, thank you. Now let's take a look at this dashboard. This is what the dashboard looks like uh, when you have your own monitor devices. You'll see that I have three devices hooked up, a monitor T, a monitor A, and a gateway. Each monitor T, I have two devices hooked up. A monitor A, I have two devices hooked up, and I have two gateways. Very simple and user-friendly to use the dashboard. When you click on each item, it starts to break down, and it still has that naming convention, and I'm kind of going to refer to that naming convention several times, which is kind of one of the things that's key. Uh, I find it to be key 
That way you can make it fully customizable for your application. If you look at the one that is Steve's ambient monitor, Steve doesn't have it plugged up right now, so it automatically is going to say, hey, there's no signal. It's also looking for that battery life as well, but these are also things that we can send alerts for. But we can look at the one that is in Christine's office, and we see it's hooked up. By clicking on it, it'll start to load, and right now it's just going to give me the average, the min and the max, pretty much for every two hours uh, that it's been reporting on. But if we needed to get additional information and take a deeper dive in type of what information uh, or what, what readings we've been seeing, we can go into that logbook. By going into the logbook, is that, that's where we get that very defined 15 seconds reading. Now, we don't need to have it, but it's good to have it. It's always a plus to have it. More information is always better, uh, if needed, than not having the information that provided. So, John, I don't know about you or, or, or your feelings on it, but I've always uh, had the conversation with people and said that uh, if this information is needed to go back and find manufacturer defects or behavioral defects, this every 15 seconds really comes into play. Yeah, absolutely. And if you go back to the graph, um, you can also zoom in on the, you know, you can zoom in on the graph for a time period, um, which helps you to, to visualize that. So, I mean, we see this. This is a typical freezer or fridge behavior where um, the temperature rises to a certain point, the compressor kicks on, drives the temperature back down, the compressor shuts off, and the temperature starts to creep back up. And so you can see that in uh, in this graph. Um, and you know, as I said, you can you can if you just click your mouse and drag it a little bit, you can zoom in on a, on a smaller. Yeah, you can zoom in on like a one hour time period, so you can see. Um, you know, with much more granularity. Um, no one's opened this freezer, but we can actually see that. If someone opens the freezer, you see a, a rise in the temperature, and we can use some, uh, you know, we can use some algorithms to to determine how many times the, the freezer or fridge has been opened, for instance. Okay. Now, that naming convention that I spoke about earlier, you'll see, and now briefly, go into that, you'll see uh, it has a serial number attached, it has where the, the location is of the device, what type of uh, monitoring uh, equipment that it's monitoring, and also where it's located at. This is very key when you start to get into alerting and reporting. So we'll go in there and we'll, we'll create a new alert. There's four criteria that you can uh, start to start a alert of, uh, threshold, connection, power, and error. Now, you can make several different types of alerts depending on what type of threshold you want, but I'm just going to do threshold. Then it'll start to ask what type of device that you want to monitor. Uh, we're going to say the monitor T. And this is where that naming convention comes in because what I find special, a special feature, you can categorize things and do it in a group setting instead of having to go in and customize each and every device. So if I wanted everything in Christine's office, if I was monitoring several different types of uh, equipment, I can set them all to one threshold. And then everything that I wanted to check in a group setting instead of going in there. So that'll save a lot of time. But you still have the capability to go in and set them individually as well. Yeah, it's kind of nice if you have a lot of labs. You can say laboratory one, refrigerator seven, you know, that sort of thing. So you know where they are when you get the alert. Um, you know, you might be out of the office, but you could, you know, tag one of your coworkers and say, hey, I just got an alert for lab one, refrigerator seven, can you go check that, you know? Yeah, that, that real-time alerting, definitely beneficial for that peace of mind and that security that's kind of built in. So now we get to a little bit more granularity, and each different type of alerting that you would want has this same level of uh, 
of granularity so you can go down and you can really refine what type of alerts you would like. But for instance, we'll say, I don't want it to be above 10 degrees Celsius. I don't ever want it to get below 100, a negative 100 degrees Celsius. And I don't want it to do that for less than we can get all the way down to a minute. Then I can start to say, okay, I want it to email me or text message me or multiple people in our organization. We want it to be uh, alerted. We can do that. And then it starts to tell you the frequency in which you can do that. Uh, we can alert people every up to one minute and we can do it up to 10 times. So every 10 seconds, it'll send someone an alert just to let them know that uh, something's wrong or just depending on the level of uh, importance. Uh, is kind of going to dictate what type of level of reporting you'll need. Okay. So that's alert. Reporting is pretty much set up exactly the same way. Uh, if you would like daily reports, monthly reports, weekly reports, if you would like it in a graph, if you wanted of the data log, if you wanted of just different types of alerts that would go off, and that same level of granularity, granularity is added here. Only difference is there is not a text messaging option on the reporting, but it is an email option. And all these documents and all this reporting is 21 CRF 11 compliant. So uh, it meets all those regulatory needs as well. Yeah, and if you're, you know, I think this is good for people with different roles. So for instance, if you're in the operations group, you might want to, you know, you might want a lot of information about everything that happened in your laboratory. If you're a researcher and you're just worried about, you know, how how did my samples fare in this particular freezer, you know, you can customize your report uh, to just contain the information that you're interested in. Excellent. So one of the big topics, calibration. We briefly touched on the NIST certification, but we can show you how user-friendly and easy it is if a device needs to be calibrated. Simply by going into this calibration screen, it'll show you that data log. It'll go back to that data and kind of show you where you're trending or what's, what's the uh, outputs that you're getting. You can look at the slope, the offset, and you can verify, then readjust the calibration. After doing that, it'll start to report that data again and you can start monitoring the solution. And simply put, that's all you have to do. There's uh, ways to do different devices. I don't think you can do multiple devices at once. Maybe you might know, John. Uh, no, it's device by device, but I mean it's nice because you don't have to take the devices out of service to have them calibrated. You can have an ISO 17025 um, certified lab come to your site or people can do it themselves you use your monitor you know uh, your your reference temperature probe take the temperature compare it to your uh, to your element T and as you said you just make the adjustment right there in, in a couple minutes and move on to the next one so um, a lot better than having to take out the devices and send them off for calibration for instance Yes, definitely. I think they'll definitely find that extremely beneficial. Anything else you wanted to bring out from the data log? I mean, uh, from the dashboard before I go back to the presentation? Um, well, just, you know, there are different types of alerts you can set up. Uh, you showed a threshold alert, um, which is very commonly used. But, you know, sometimes people want to know, um, oh, did my power go out, for instance, you know, um, up here in the Northeast, we have, you know, blizzards and power outages, you know, out in California, as everybody knows, there, you know, um, Pacific gas has been shutting off the power if there's wild uh, wildfires and things like that. So, um, you know, if the power goes out, um, it's good to get an alert because then, you know, well, geez, I better get into my lab and do something with my samples. Um, the, the system will continue to collect uh, information when the power's out. So the gateway runs for about eight hours uh, on battery backup. The sensors themselves are battery powered, so they run 
Um, and then, you know, one of the reasons that we have cellular is uh, if your Wi-Fi network is out. So even if all the power is out in your lab, one, you can get an alert pretty quickly to know that. And two, you know, all's not lost. We're still going to be monitoring, uh, you know, your lab for and collecting data for up to eight hours. So people find that very beneficial. Oh, definitely. All right. So it really gives that peace of mind, that level of security that really, if you're out of the lab, nothing uh, in your freezers, freezer, refrigerators, or incubators will uh, uh, be out of out of range uh, or, or too long. Uh, so that that's immediate immediate benefit to the lab. So phase one, what is it? Phase two, what is it? Phase one uh, is what we're in right now. It's we use full utilization of the dashboard. Uh, so there is no integration with the lens until March 31st, which is the end of Q1. Uh, then we'll be moving directly into phase two, which is limbs integration. Uh, so we'll be integrating the API with Titan and Sample Master. Uh, so it'll look for the average, the min, and the max, uh, every four hours and put it directly into the lens, which is exciting. So I know a lot of people are looking forward to that. Then that way, uh, the dashboard is still there if you need the utilization of that and if you need to do that deeper 15 second dive. But, uh, the information that you're looking for for daily, or every four hours will be directly inputted into the lens. Let's ask some questions that kind of some of our people that have already looked into Monitor Plus have really been curious about. So how does it Monitor Plus compare to other monitoring solutions on the market? Well, I think, you know, that that's a big thing that I just mentioned. A lot of the, uh, a lot of the older systems are, um, you know, wired. Um, so there's a lot of planning that goes into setting up a system. You have to say, okay, here's the 10 points I want to monitor. Um, they have to, you know, run all the cables. They have to put a server in your, uh, you know, in your facility, run all the cables back to there. Uh, so, you know, that people hate the wiring. I mean, I was just at a, a trade show in San Diego and the people I talked to who had other systems, you know, really hated dealing with all the wiring. Um, so, you know, that's that's a big advantage. And then, you know, I think what you can do with the data. Um, so, you know, we talked about alerting and monitoring, which is extremely important. But, you know, you collect all this data every 15 seconds. We do see we do see people that use the data to uh, to do predictive maintenance. For instance, we had. Um, we had a customer that was seeing, you know, sort of irregularities in their freezer data. They shared all the data with the freezer manufacturer and the freezer manufacturer said, yeah, you know, there's something wrong with your compressor. It's going to fail soon. So instead of having a failure that they had to deal with at the last minute, they were able to plan, you know, to shut down that freezer and replace the compressor. And in fact, I believe it was done under warranty. So it saved them several thousand dollars. You know, they wouldn't have known that without having um, a complete data record that, that was provided to them. Yeah, and I know one of the benefits and something that kind of I feel like only you guys are offering is that backup. If that power goes out, that gateway is going to still be uh, reporting that data for an additional eight hours, and it has that cellular backup service. So there's so much benefit into even if we lose power, we're still going to be getting alerts when our things do go out of range. Or we may not know we've lost power. Well, that, that'll that kind of let us know when we get that alert that, hey, our refrigerator is acting crazy. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, and again, at this trade show, I was just at, um, you know, a couple people said, well, wait a minute, you know. I can go out and buy a Raspberry Pi and, you know, make my own sensor. And I said, yeah, you know, you could do that. But is that how you want to spend your time? You know, you, this guy was in a, in the pharma business. And I was like, you know, your, your job is to go find a cure for cancer, you know, not to, not to do this. Why don't you let me deal with this? <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you know, you know, focus on, on, on 
you know, what it is you're good at. And it's, it's not so easy to make a system that is really reliable under a whole wide variety of conditions. Um, so people don't, people don't really understand, um, you know, how much effort is involved in making this system as redundant and as reliable as possible. Amazing. Now let me ask another question. What is the annual cost and what's covered by it? Uh, so you had it there in your slide. Um, I, I think you're, you started at 550. It depended upon how many uh, um, sensors you had. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a subscription service. So, um, you know, the annual fee covers, you know, all of the hardware, everything from the sensor to the gateway to, um, you know, the dashboard and everything. Um, all of our, all support is included, service is included. If, you know, you have a problem, if a customer has a problem with uh, one of their sensors, you know what? We'll just send you a new one and you send the old one back. Um, another thing is, you know, we have an unlimited number of users, so we're not going to tier it and say, okay, if you have more than five, we're going to charge you more. Um, we work with a lot of incubators around the country where they might have 10, 20, 30 companies in the one facility. Um, so, you know, we have, we have, we have installations where there's a hundred users or more. So, you know, unlimited number of users. Free software upgrades. It includes the cellular service uh, every month, which can be expensive. And, uh, you know, we don't charge for uh, API access to the data, which some other people do. Um, I've met a lot of people recently, data scientists who are, you know, writing their own programs to come in and grab data and use it, you know, for their quality system or for other purposes. So, you know, there's a lot that goes into that that annual fee that people might not see, but those are, those are some of the things that, that are in there. All right. And lastly, and probably one of the most important questions to the group, why is this system beneficial for your lab? Well, I think, you know, the first thing we talked about, which is, is really the most important thing is just peace of mind. You know, if you're, if you're an operations manager or director, um, you know, I think those folks deal with emergencies all the time. Unfortunately, that's the, that's kind of how the job goes. Um, so this sort of alleviates one big headache. You know, they need to make sure that, um, their valuable assets that are in cold storage or in incubators or wherever are protected. Um, you know, uh, a couple of years ago, there were, there were two very high profile failures at, uh, fertility clinics, you know, I mean, those are samples that are irreplaceable. So I think the peace of mind that goes with knowing that your valuable assets are protected is, is uh, probably the most important thing. But then there are other great things like, you know, um, um, interfacing it with your limb system. So you only have to go to one place to see the data. I mean, that's something that your um, customers are really going to appreciate. And then there's higher level um, things that we can do with the data, like understanding utilization. Um, people people often wonder, well, you know, I got 50 freezers here in this lab. How often do they really get used? You know, we can give you some insight into um, how often things are used. Could you get rid of one of those freezers and save some money? Um, so, you know, there's a there's a lot you can do when you start collecting this sort of data. And I feel like it's going to be really eye-opening to a lot of the labs. Uh, just what, how you, how customer, user-friendly this is, but also how customizable it is, and also how much of a benefit it will be. Let's get the laboratory people back to testing, uh, instead of, instead of, uh, monitoring devices. So, John, we really appreciate it. Thank you again for taking the time out and thank everyone for watching. Yeah, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. All righty. Have a great one. Thanks.